Pastor Joe here, lead pastor at Markham Woods Presbyterian Church. Just giving you a bit of update uh, and maybe a little devotional tacked on for you also. Uh, today is, uh, we're nearing the end of June, which means new month is coming up. And we celebrate at the Lord's table at the beginning of every month, first Sunday of every month. So with the continued uh, issue of COVID that's going on right now, especially with the, uh, the uptick that we've had around our community, we will be having communion. But once again, we're going to offer the communion kits for you. And for those of you uh, that don't attend uh, in-person worship, the way that works is anytime today, uh, or a Wednesday or Thursday from 10 to 3 o'clock. That means today, tomorrow, and also Thursday, 10 to 3 o'clock. You can drive by the church and we will give you communion kits. <clears throat> you can come in, you can phone, let us know. We'll bring them out to you. You do not have to come into the building. So in the past, we've done the, the drive-by meals, but we're going to be doing this a little differently this time. So if, you, if you'd like to have a communion kit to be able to celebrate with us, that's a great way to do it. You could also, if you want, like many churches are doing today, uh, just uh, you can create that yourself with some bread and some juice or however you want to, to create those elements as we come to the Lord's table. So I want to let you know that you can receive those kits. Let's talk a little bit about in-person worship. We know with the the up, uh, uptick in uh, the coronavirus around this area, around the church, it's actually come a bit close now. So uh, we still will hold in-person worship. We realize that uh, many of you have been staying home. We saw the numbers go down. Uh, for those of you who choose to, to continue to come in, that uh, we, again, we are, uh, you must wear the mask. That is the recommendation now in the county for everyone. Uh, but we also will, we can test your temperature. We have hand sanitizer. We are we're spacing at least 10 feet between um, worshipers. So that's been working very well for us, for those of you who have been attending. So we'll continue to do that. All the sanitation of the entire sanctuary between services takes place. I know for some folks, uh, you, you may not feel... Uh, you may not feel like coming out is a wise decision for you, and we want to respect that. And it is perfectly fine. Please feel no, uh, no, uh, uh, you know, bad feelings about staying at home. Uh, that may be the proper thing for you right now. We encourage you to watch our, our live stream. And for those of you who wanted to return to the really high quality audio we had uh, before we went to in-person worship, that will return. We have, uh, we've gotten the equipment now to make that possible uh, like it was happening before we went back to in-person worship. So the worship service will be very high quality. The sound will be quality. I think you'll like that. So it's okay to stay home. It's also okay if you feel comfortable coming in. We, we have a very, very safe way to do that if you wish. So there's a couple of things we wanted you to know. Uh, there are some of the meetings, uh, Bible studies are still happening through Zoom, but uh, for the time being, um, the, the campus is pretty well still shut down, except for the office area and our worship space. So I wanted to leave you with a little bit of, uh, there's a lot in the news and, and the, the, you know, we many of us thought maybe the COVID was was uh, lessening. Uh, you know, th we're testing like crazy, so we're seeing more cases. The The good news I've been hearing is that the, the mortality rate continues to drop. That's great, but the cases appear to be up. So maybe we need a little encouragement today. I don't know how you feel about uh, coincidences. Um, I have found in all of my years of ministry that there aren't a lot of coincidences. I really feel like God works uh, through the Holy Spirit to, to create opportunities. And sometimes things just happen that I don't question so much anymore as a coincidence. So this morning I sat down, what do I want to tell you folks for devotion? And lo and behold, I pick up a commentary and out of this commentary, a page falls out, right? A page. I, I didn't pick the page. I didn't know the page was loose, but the page just fell right out on my desk. So I picked up the page. Uh, so I found this quite interesting, and I want to share this with you as a bit of a devotion today. And you can call it uh, coincidence, or you can call it the work of the Holy Spirit. But here's what fell out of the book when I picked it up today. 
Uh, this is uh, this is out of uh, uh, William Barclay, uh, older uh, commentator on the Bible, but many of us have his series. But uh, this is what fell out. I want to read you this. He's talking about uh, Jesus and the Great Commission, where Jesus is all power on heaven and has been given to me. Go out, preach the gospel, heal in my name. Many of us know those words very well. So here's what he has to say. Here we come to the end of the gospel story. Here we listen to the last words of Jesus to his team, right? In the last meeting, Jesus did three things. Here's what Barclay lays out. Number one, he assured them of his power. Surely nothing was outside the power of him who had died and conquered death. Now they were servants of a master whose authority upon earth and in heaven was beyond all question. They serve the master of the universe. Number two, he gave them a commission. He sent them out to make all the world his disciples. It may well be that the instruction to baptize is something which is a development of actual, the actual words of Jesus. That may be argued about. The salient fact remains, he says, that the commission of Jesus is to win all people for himself. Number three, he promised them a presence. And, and this may be the most powerful word for this moment in our lives. It, may, it must have been a staggering thing for 11 humble Galileans to be sent forth to the conquest of the entire world. Are you getting that? Here's 11, 11 folks that didn't quite know what to do. They didn't quite have all the training. And now they've been told that it's their job is the world. Conquer the world for me. So Barclay goes on to say, even as they heard it, their hearts must have failed them. But no sooner was the command given than the promise followed. They were sent out, as we are, on the greatest task in history. But with them, there was the greatest presence in the world. Barclay closes this really commentary on the, on the Gospel of Matthew with this. Though few and small, and weak your bands, strong in your captain's strength, go to the conquest of all lands. All must be his at length. So I think the presence part of that is the one that speaks to me right now, that we go with the presence of God. And, and although it might be harder to think about the Great Commission right now with what's going on, the presence, though, that goes with us as we continue to battle in this, this disease and battle through the burdens it places on us, they are not more powerful than the presence of God that is with us. So as you know, we have some folks in the hospital now, and maybe you know people that are in the hospital. And it's a tough time because we can't go and visit like before. But the presence of God can be with them. And we can, we can hold that up in prayer. The presence of God is with you, it's with this church, and it can be with those. So, the coincidence, serendipitous you know, event, uh, or the work of the Holy Spirit, that a page fell out, only page has ever fallen out of any of my commentaries. It happened today. So there's the word for the day. Peace go with you. If you need something, please call the church, food, wh whatever you need. We have all those things available. Don't forget to come by and pick up communion kits today, tomorrow, and Thursday.